Hello, everyone, and welcome to Humentum's webinar, Time, Leave, and Expense Management for Today's World, with Humentum industry partner, partner Data Basics. A bit of housekeeping first. All attendees are currently muted. To ask questions, please enter them in the questions or chat box on your toolbar. A recording of the webinar and the slides, along with follow-up materials, will be emailed later this afternoon. We are excited to have Chris Harley of DataBasics here today to address a topic many of our members have been discussing due to the changes COVID-19 is causing. I'd like to thank him for his time and expertise. And with that, I'm excited to hand the webinar off to Chris. Uh, thanks, Jessica. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for giving us some time here uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending upon where you are in the world. Uh, as Jessica mentioned, uh, my name is Chris Harley. I'm with Data Basics, and really the topic we want to address today is, you know, the impacts and key challenges that uh, we are seeing from companies as it relates to time, leave, and expense management. Uh, looking to take probably 30, 35 minutes or so and talk about, you know, the, the quick onset of COVID-19 and the impact it had on our organizations, the key challenges that we are seeing from our customers out there, and then really the best practices that we are seeing implemented to support this. And, uh, you know, once we go through there at the end, uh, we do have a question and answer uh, option out there. So any questions that you guys have, please feel free to, to ask at the end, and I'll, I will address them to the best of my ability. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with data basics, uh, we are a global provider of uh, timesheets and expense reporting software. Uh, we've been providing these solutions here for well over 20 years. Uh, really, since the beginning of web-based solutions came to the marketplace, uh, we've been providing these applications. Uh, we're headquartered in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Uh, and from an integration perspective, really work with all major accounting, HR, and payroll solutions out there. Um, as Jessica mentioned, we are a new Humentum uh, industry partner. Uh, quite excited to be working with uh, with the members here within Humentum, although we've had a, a history of, of working with uh, members over the last uh, few years. Uh, some of our existing customers include organizations like Comonix and Mercy Corps and Pathfinder International and Search for Common Ground. So uh, although we've not officially been a member, uh, we certainly have been working with the organizations that you guys work with and some of your partners out there. Um, and really our focus out there is to help organizations globally uh, adapt to the challenges that take place. Some of those challenges uh, are have quick onsets like we'll talk about today. Uh, others are more gradual challenges out there, and what we like to do is engage our customers to find out the best way to go out and address those challenges out there. Uh, specifically today, uh, we're going to talk about time, expense, and leave uh, and, and the impact out there. You know, uh, and I guess the, the elephant in the room that we all are quite aware about is really the, the recent changes over the last six to eight weeks as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, we first all started hearing about COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, in the early part of this year. Um, at that point, it was a, it was a, a virus that was spreading uh, through Asia and for the most of us looking at other parts of the world. Uh, for those of us in the U.S., uh, we weren't really aware of COVID-19 until uh, really the, the, the beginning of February. Um, but as it approached the U.S., uh, we saw a very quick change and a very large impact within our organizations. Now, some of these numbers here are, are, are spe uh, specifically for the U.S. Uh, obviously, you guys are many of your global organizations, but I thought it was some interesting numbers to look at how quickly these changes were coming. Uh, on March 13th, uh, according to Gardner, 13% of the U.S. workforce was working remote. Um, by the time that weekend had ended, uh, those numbers had more than doubled. Uh, and by the end of that third week in March, uh, by Friday, March 20th, uh, almost 71% of the U.S. workforce had made the transition um, to working remotely. Uh, today, those numbers are much higher. Um, but what we saw is that this quick change uh, impacted really three key areas out there. Um, and the global impact really started with the productivity of organizations, uh, the compliance that they were looking to manage, and then obviously their corporate culture. Uh, for many of our customers, it was kind of a, a shock and awe. Uh, we talked just a minute ago about how quickly this impact came. Um, but the shock and awe was how quickly organizations were having to make decisions around these areas, um, how quickly they were needed to implement new processes, 
And then the other key challenges out there was, did they have the ability to actually implement those? And so let's kind of talk about, you know, these three areas and, and what that impact looked like. Um, the first one we looked at, which was probably the one that, again, impacted us, you know, even into individually, uh, related to the overall productivity, or I should say the concerns around productivity. And it's interesting today, uh, as we're into May, to think about, you know, the world today as it was even six weeks ago, and we look at some of those initial concerns that were taking place out there. Um, you know, the first big area was the transition from to a, a global remote workforce. Now, again, for some of the organizations that are sitting here on this call, you know, you're, you're, you had a large remote workforce, but the way that remote workforce was adapting and changing based upon COVID-19 was very different. Um, for those of us who are working in offices or making the transition to home, uh, we had to look at how were we to support uh, those individual users. Uh, did we have a way to capture their time and expense details? Did we have new time and expense uh, information that we needed to have collected out there? Uh, for folks that were in other parts of the world, did we have a quick and easy way to get those employees back into the U.S.? What were the rules and regulations around the movement of those employees? And how are we going to pay for those? Uh, the other area we also saw was that now we have these big impacts on overall productivity um, was we had to make quick decisions out there. Uh, one of our largest uh, customers who was a, a government contractor uh, was sharing a story with us about the fact that as the initial onset came, uh, they didn't know really how they were going to handle you know, moving employees out of certain locations to the home. And so the initial thought was, we're going to have our employees go in and take their leave uh, until we put in place a process. So uh, they asked employees to put in their leave. Um, they, the executive team then met on a Tuesday and made a decision about an adjustment to that leave policy. Uh, and then 48 hours later, made another adjustment to that leave policy. Now, what's interesting is that uh, wasn't the fact that they made a decision on their leave or that they made an adjustment to the leave. It was the fact that they were making decisions within uh, a couple hour time frame where normally these decisions may be vetted over a few weeks or months or even a year to come up with new policies out there. Uh, and then the next piece, of course, was just the overall impact on the projects that we work, were working. Uh, so as organizations moved employees off of projects and grants that they were working on, you know, how are they going to manage and what did it look like as it, as it related to that? Now, the productivity issue, and we talk about the challenges and impacts going back a few weeks, you know, one of the interesting stats I just saw uh, over the last few days was that in a, a survey for HR professionals um, in early April, uh, job security was the number one concern of overall employees out there. Um, and as of today, so just four weeks later, uh, the number one concern out there is putting in place technology and tools to the remote workforce. And so it's interesting to watch how uh, even over the last few weeks, the focus and how we're looking to address individual users and challenges out there is changing. Um, the second big area was, of course, compliance out there. Uh, you know, as we made a transition uh, of these users, uh, we saw a number of areas that we were looking to understand how that would impact the organization out there. Um, for those employees that were changing where they were providing their work from, or uh, there was a question related to payroll and tax implications. Uh, for leave, uh, for employees that were needed to take leave, uh, did we have the ability to manage, track that leave? Are we able to see the individual details around that? And what would the impact be throughout the organization if we did ask people to take leave that maybe they had or are yet to accrue. And then of course the overall employee expectations. Uh, for many employees working remote is something that is natural to them and they were doing already. For many other employees out there, the transition to working from home and remote was new. Uh, it certainly wasn't part of the job description when they took the job. And so them trying to understand what are the expectations of a remote employee. And uh, I'm sure you guys have either talked to, you know, colleagues or friends out there. And I'm sure you've heard a number of different scenarios played out as far as ex expectations um, from employers out there. Uh, you know, everything from you hear people where they're asking employees to leave their uh webcams on so they could operate almost as if they were in the corporate environment uh, 
to other areas out there where they have no expectation around that. And so it's a it's a very interesting time out there as organizations start to change and understand what the impacts are here of this new world uh, reality. Uh, and as it relates to that, uh, I think that's probably one of the biggest areas that we see impact um, is overall the corporate culture. Uh, you know, as this first as COVID-19 first had the onset and the impact as it relates to global organizations, there's no doubt uh, the first questions people were looking for us to help them address related to leave management and tracking time codes and looking at the overall impact as it relates directly to the organization and the business continuality. Um, as we've gotten into this new norm, though, the corporate culture is suddenly becoming a large area that organizations are looking to address. Uh, I, without a doubt, I think one of the biggest impacts here is this is really looking at your organization's corporate identity. Uh, corporate identity for many of us is a very critical component, uh, and it's something that you're able to control, uh, especially if you're bringing employees into uh, a, a single work environment. Uh, if you have corporate events, uh, there's many things that you can do as it relates to those employees. Uh, my brother-in-law works for Amazon, and he talks about their corporate culture often. Uh, and that corporate culture is that they have teams set up in order to support those employees and provide that process. Well, now, as you suddenly move those employees remotely into uh, dispersed locations, uh, it becomes much more difficult to control what that corporate culture looks like. Uh, and of course, this ultimately has an impact on, on the employee morale out there. Uh, you know, one of the uh, interesting things here is that, uh, you know, as we look at some of the stats that, you know, I read that 25% of HR professionals uh, said that their people want better emotional support and clarity from their leaderships uh, and also tips on, on how to work from home. And again, as we look at this, this wasn't necessarily something there that you were looking at when you first brought the employees on which really translates into those new management styles. Um, you know, I can speak from, from personal experience here uh, as part of the management team at Database. Uh, you know, my, for the last 20 years, I managed the team and interact with other employees here within a, within a single office environment out there. Um, and now that trans, I've made that transition to remote employees, and what we're understanding is that communication is critical to that process, but also being more understanding of, Employees, uh, you know, not everyone has the ability to have a dedicated workspace within their uh, within their house. Uh, certainly, people have small children at home, numerous pets, and again, I'm sure we're all seeing this as we jump on uh, corporate phone calls and video conferencing out there. So, as we looked at kind of the initial impact out here, we really looked at those three key areas out there: was the overall impact as it relates to productivity, compliance. Um, and then, of course, your culture. And I'll talk in a minute here about some of the best practices and what people are doing to address these items out here. Now, along with those areas that were impacted, we also saw some new legislation. Now, this legislation uh, was primarily for we looked at the U.S. And again, uh, with the Family First Coronavirus Response Act, we saw some new leave rules being implemented out there. Uh, and those leave rules uh, were structured in a, in a number of different fashions out there. One related to uh, if you, in fact, were personally uh, impacted by coronavirus in the sense that you had actually uh, had the virus. Uh, the other rules we saw out there related to supporting family members and relatives as it relates to uh, coronavirus. And within each one of those, um, it did have a different, uh, you know, a leave uh, a policy in place as far as how many hours people were allow, allowed to take but then there was also rules around the percentage of the pay that needs to be reimbursed as it related to that. Um, and then again, there was also an additional 10 weeks of, of paid expanded, uh, expanded uh, family and medical leave. Um, you know, and so what we saw was new legislation coming in place um, as it relates to items that we had to control. And then, of course, the CARES Act out there, um, which put in place uh, new programs, uh, which had mandatory spend out there, um, and then also some discretionary appropriations. Uh, and some of those obviously impacted as it relates to uh, USAID and some emergency funds that were put out there. So as we looked at the impact of, of what was taking place here over the last six weeks, uh, really today what we wanted to talk a lot about was uh, the 
pillars for success to support today's workforce. And uh, again, a lot of this relates to some of the folks that you are already comfortable with having remotely, but really looking at the overall change overall. As it relates to the success for uh, today's remote workforce, uh, one of the interesting things we saw is that uh, the challenges out there aren't simply items that can be uh, solved by putting in place, you know, just simply technology out there. Um, and database that could be in a technology provider, yeah, that's something that we usually would block out to an organization and talk to about how, you know, you've got a specific challenge around lead or you got a specific challenge around how your time sheets are being managed and we can show you how our technology works and companies said that's great. Really what we're looking at today is expanding the technology and starting to look at a number of other areas out there. Um, certainly technology is important and we'll talk about how you need to have good technology in place to support these processes. But really the first piece here is looking at the processes you have in place. Uh, you know, some of the questions and one of the key questions that we get from a lot of our customers is we're putting in place new processes and these processes are going across the organization. Um, do they need to be fair? Um, do we need to take into account that we understand we have different types of employees now? Uh, and we're asking them to do different things from home, let's say. You know, again, so you need to be more understanding that uh, people may not always have the quietest place to, to do this work, or they may not be able to, to do this work because of due to child care. They may not have to do it earlier in the morning or later in the evenings out there. So um, you need to go ahead and have a good process in place. The next thing you have to do, and this is really the biggest piece we're seeing now, is the ability to communicate. Um, We've seen that through some of the surveys out there that it shows that 45% uh, of businesses say that employees want some sort of communication um, from their upper level management uh, on a daily basis. That communication can either be done through video conferencing, email, or just some sort of outreach. We see the ability to communicate why you're making changes to the process, what the impact is on the user. But overall, people want to have more communication these days as they no longer have the ability to see someone in the hall or out in the field as their uh, supervisor out there. And then really the, the fourth piece out here is the adaptability of these overall processes. Um, there is no doubt there's more change coming. Um, as all of us have, have experienced over the last six, seven weeks or so, we see that, uh, you know, we should say we saw very quickly um, right off the bat that things that we thought would happened one way, happened another way, um, and then changed again. So we have to be able to make sure that we have the ability to put together good technology, good process, strong communication, and also the recognition that there's going to be changes coming and that we all have to be adaptable to these processes. So as we look at these four pillars, uh, we wanted to start to apply them against uh, really the three key areas that we want to discuss here today. The first one, of course, would be lead management. Um, Lead management was the first thing that customers contacted us with uh, when the onset of the coronavirus came about uh, six, seven weeks ago as people started to make this transition. Um, what we saw was new policies out there um, as organizations struggled to figure out what to do as employees initially went to work from home. Uh, and what we, we then saw certainly the impact as it relates to the Family First Coronavirus Response Act um, but then we started having questions around items like donating leave. You know, are we going to give employees the ability to donate leave to others uh, for those that had large amounts? Um, and then we, the second piece of that became how do we track that information? Is there ability for us to go ahead um, and to set this up? And so as we looked earlier, kind of those pillars out there, um, the way we would handle this is we would have a customer sit down. We could talk with them make sure they are comfortable with the new policy they have, and then we would show them the ability to make those changes there within our software, have that technology take place. They could then communicate that out through message boards and emails within the software. Um, but then, of course, to make sure that there is the ability as that moves forward to go ahead and make adjustments as it, as it takes place. Um, so from a lead perspective, again, it's important to understand what those new policies are, to have a place that's will to track them, and then, of course, to recognize that you have the ability to also go out and to make adjustments. Now, as it relates to those new policies, um, what we also saw is that companies wanted to start to look to see, well, what was the impact of these policies? Do I have the ability to run reports and to see 
you know, if we add to people's uh, accrual process or if someone wants to uh, give uh, hours to someone else, do we have the ability to see that information? Um, and it ultimately leads to what we're seeing moving here in, in the for moving forward, um, which is, you know, one of the questions we have here is what happens when we all go back to work? Uh, you know, it's, it's funny to look at the transition from six weeks ago when everyone was, was concerned about how we track leave to now the concern is, okay, um, as states uh, and countries start to open back up, what's going to happen as the employees go back to work? Are we suddenly going to see uh, an instance where everyone has been cooped up in their house, uh, they've been accruing vacation, and now they all suddenly want to go on vacation again? And so, you know, uh, we joke about it here within the office of, uh, you know, when we all go back to work, are we all going to suddenly go on vacation? Are we going to have a scenario where uh, the month of September, you're not going to be able to find anyone in the office because they are taking advantage of the fact that they've accrued a lot of vacation out there. So from a best practice perspective, we are starting to see our customers uh, start to actually uh, implement some leave policies around that. Um, they've put in place uh, rules around making sure that they do have coverage uh, for those critical uh, roles in the organization. Um, the way they're able to manage that is to be able to look within the solution to see a calendar view to see who's trying to take leave off when and where. Uh, we've also seen other customers out there who are actually starting to mandate employees take leave now. Uh, we have one uh, customer out there, uh, for example, who has asked employees to take four days of vacation uh, between now and June 15th. Uh, even though employees are working from home, uh, they're asking them to take vacation just so they can start easing up some of those liabilities in the books, but also making sure that they're not going to have this rush um, as we go back to work and so employees are able to go ahead and, and take, take those vacation days. Um, as we move beyond kind of leave management, we start looking at the employee and time management. Uh, you know, so, uh, and some of this becomes very basic as we look at the overall work that people are providing. Uh, you know, I mentioned one of the first areas that companies asked us about was leave codes and the ability to track leave. Uh, the second component of that was project tracking within the timesheet. Uh, is they were coming to us to look to see if there was an ability to set up new project codes or task codes as it relates to projects because within those timesheets, uh, depending upon where employees were performing the work, that data needed to be tracked. Um, they were also looking to see what the overall impact um, as employees were making the transition to home. Maybe there were fewer hours being spent worked against a pro certain project or a certain grant out there. So they wanted to be able to get into the solution and run reports to see how many hours were being inputted, um, what does that look like against the budget? And then again, if we needed to implement a new code or a new location code, they wanted to go ahead and see how that could be put in place. Now, once that was put in place, what they wanted to do is make sure they were communicating that information back out to the users to let the users know why those changes were made out there. And then the next piece here is back to work planning. Uh, most what we've heard from most of our customers is that employees want to certainly be aware of what's taking place as it relates to back to work planning. Employees also want to have input into that process out there. Uh, it's a very interesting time for organizations out there. Uh, obviously, we've been very sensitive to other scenarios in the workplace out there uh, as it relates to, you know, really, again, just, just general rules out there. But as you look at this, um, you know, where is employees' individual comfort as it relates to going back to work? Um, do they, are they living with uh, older folks in the house and they want to lessen the threat of, of contracting something in the office and bringing it back home? So back to work planning is something that is very big right now. Uh, we would recommend you definitely communicate that with your employees, but also bring the employees into that uh, into the mix as it relates to that conversation so that you understand and can show them that you are listening to uh, their individual concerns out there. Um, the other item as it relates to back to work planning, we are seeing organizations looking at items such as staggered shifts. Uh, again, uh, everything in place to ensure that the employees are comfortable, but then also you're lessening any risk that may be out there as it relates to the coming months here and employees quote, we say going back to work uh, from that side. 
Um, and then really the, the, the last piece out here we want to talk about is, is expense management. Um, you know, as, as employees transitioned from the field into the uh, home office, uh, we received a number of questions out there as it relates to what we were paying for, what customers, what other customers are paying for out there. Um, and so one of the, the first things we would say is it's critical to put in place a, a remote slash home office policy. Uh, make it known uh, to the, your user community what you do and don't pay for. Uh, if you want to implement a, a flat per diem, um, that's fine. Uh, make sure you have a process in place so that you can put that per diem out and employees understand what that per diem is for. Um, do you have an expense management system to make it easy for the employee to put that per diem in? Uh, or are there other items that you're going to expect that user to provide that? Uh, new expenses that we've seen out there is uh, companies going out and buying chairs for employees, lamps for employees, uh, obviously uh, paying for Wi-Fi and other areas out there. Um, so the transition to the home office has certainly come up with some new expense types out there. Um, and as we look at those new expense types, we then get the questions of, well, how do we track those expense types? Is there an easy way for us to put that information into an expense reporting tool, or how do we provide that information within there? Um, and then beyond the home office policies, uh, we're now engaging companies out there as it relates to new travel policies. Uh, I had the question actually just uh, yesterday uh, related to uh, one of the individuals on my team uh, where he had a client who asked them to come out uh, for an on-site meeting. Uh, it's, it's been a long time, almost two months since we've seen that. Uh, and so his question to me was, the customer is asking us to come out. Are we allowed to, to go out there? And then from our corporate travel policies, that, you know, we, we've talked about, you know, where we sit within our travel policy and, you know, again, how that impacts, you know, not only what the customer is looking for, but what also our internal policies are out there. And of course, everything is around being safe and making sure that we are communicating this out to the individual users out there. But as we look at, Changes to your expense process, changes to your leave process, changes to your time process. Um, we always come back to really those, those first four pillars I was talking about out there, which is, do you have the technology in place in order to make these changes? Um, has the process that you're looking to do been vetted? And once you have that process in place, do you have an ability to communicate that out to your users? Uh, and then the last piece there is, of course, is will that process allow you to adapt as future changes come. Um, and so as we look at this, um, that's always going to be the way that we're going to look at how we look at all these changes out there as it relates to both time, expense, and leave there. Now, the one certain we know is that there is more uncertainty to come. Uh, there is no doubt uh, that more change is, more change is coming. Uh, as we talk to our customers out there, uh, and even as we talk to prospects and, and new customers coming to Data Basics, uh, one of the things that people continue to ask us about is, you know, the ability for our software to adjust to future changes out there. And I think everyone is aware um, that there are more changes coming. And so, you know, uh, with that being said, uh, you know, again, I, it's, a, it's a general expectation for users out there is that, you know, there will be future modifications to the leave process, the time process, and the expense process out there. Um, what we say is this is a great opportunity right now to go out and to create and evaluate contingency plans. Um, you probably had or maybe you didn't have a contingency plan as it relates to uh, what took place here over the last six weeks or so. Um, and if not, you know, use this time to go ahead and do that. Um, certainly rely on industry resources like you mentioned uh, and some of your peer organizations out there uh, to bounce off ideas. Uh, I know certainly in talking to Jessica, there's been a lot of talk within, you know, your, uh, the Humentum message boards and communities about, you know, what are you doing around change? What are we doing around expense types out there? So we say, you know, please go out and, and talk to, talk to, you know, other industry resources uh, just on a personal basis. I think it's very interesting you know, some of the questions I've had from some of my friends out there, and they've been asking us about, you know, what are you guys doing related to this or, or some other area out there? And I'm sure you guys are having those conversations in, in social settings, which are mostly over video these days, about, you know, are companies requiring you to be on video conference or not be on video conference? And so 
definitely rely on your on your peer and your peer organizations out there as it, as it relates to that. And then the last piece, of course, is making sure you have the right systems in place. Uh, and when we say the right systems, again, it's more than just simply technology out there, but it's the right systems for communication, uh, the right process for communication, uh, and understanding if those are the processes and those areas that the employees are comfortable uh, embracing as it relates to those areas out there. Uh, and then ultimately, again, uh, you know, I, I, I do think there is some silver lining uh, to the last few weeks. There certainly have been some tragic and some terrible uh, impact from what's taken place from, from COVID-19. Uh, and there's no doubt the uh, business impact is going to be something that's felt for a long time out there. Um, but there are some silver linings, and it's one of the things that, that we, within my organization, we, we, we continue to, to try to promote out there. Uh, which is embracing change. Uh, you know, I, I even talk about that on a personal level. Uh, I'm sure with everyone that's sitting here on this call over the last six, seven weeks, you've, you've probably done something, uh, or engaged in something that you probably never thought you would, you would do it in the past. Um, and it may be as simple as uh, getting takeout from a restaurant where you never thought you could take out food from, uh, or maybe it's, uh, wearing sweatpants. Or the same pair of sweatpants for the same number of days out there. But um, ultimately, uh, you know, change isn't always bad. Uh, and as we look at this here, uh, you know, we like to say, you know, turn these challenges into opportunities to become more efficient uh, and effective. Um, you know, there is no doubt um, as we look at the next four, six, nine months out there, you are going to see some changes into the way organizations are uh Treating employees out there, uh, you may see a greater move to remote workforce. You may see more Zoom and video type of conferences out there. Um, the other thing you will see is that this was a, an opportunity to test some of the existing processes that you had in place uh, and to see how well they work. Uh, so use this uh, as an opportunity to make those changes that maybe you were putting off uh, for one reason or another uh, and use some of this, this uh, what we won't necessarily call downside, but some of this time, you know, where you have more focused effort uh, to certainly uh, make yourself more effective uh, as it relates to an organization. Um, and then really the last area out here is that, you know, we're certainly seeing that the last few weeks have given organizations a more personal feel. Um, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, but again, I'm sure for those of you that sit on, on video calls, uh, you know, you're starting to see, you know, uh, your coworkers' kids, uh, or hear their pets in some of those areas out there. But, uh, you know, it, when most people took this job, you know, you, the idea wasn't that you were going to be welcoming your company into your home, but, but to the fact that we are making that move to a remote workforce, um, it is giving us a, a more personalized approach, but it is also, when I say a personalized approach, I talk about from a management style out there, um, is that everything that we've heard, uh, and everything that I've read as it relates to the way to address this is, uh, it's very important that we take more time to understand what the employees are looking for and where their feelings and emotions are as it relates to some of these changes out there. Um, so again, as we talk about the way we want to address this, um, it's important that we are communicating with the employees out there, understanding that they are comfortable with the changes out there and that they ultimately understand what those changes are. And so with that, uh, what I will do is, uh, you know, turn the floor over to some questions out there. I think Jessica's going to jump back in. But, uh, uh, Jessica, any questions about what we've gone through here? Thanks again, Chris. This is all really important information. And like you said, we've been seeing lots of questions around this. Um, from our members. And so one of the questions that you, or topics that you kind of touched on is um, leave and also just how uh, potentially people may meet, need more leave than they have um, available due to different circumstances. So um, what are your suggestions on policies around donating leave and how best to manage that? Yeah, so we've had a lot of questions around leave and how to manage it. And then again, what about people that don't have leave or the new employees out there? And so some of these are going to come back to the individual organization as far as where their comfort is out there. Uh, with that being said, I know as you guys can look at leave management systems, most should have the ability for a couple things to take place. One is you can always create uh, basically a, an 
an advanced bank of, of leads to someone out there. So basically, you know, go in there and they give someone hours and let them use those hours with the understanding that they will accrue up against that. The other opportunity is to donate leads. Uh, and again, it, it, you know, it operates in kind of a, a communal fund out there as employees want to go out and use or get, donate some of their leave uh, to other, other employees out there. Um, and so, again, it, depending upon your individual you know, organization policy out there, uh, there certainly are softwares out there. I know I can certainly speak from our side where you would give them the, the ability for someone to go out and, again, to donate. Or again, if it's just something the organization is saying, we're going to go ahead and just give someone a, a lump sum of hours, uh, there's the ability to do that. Uh, and then the other piece about that is, um, as you make these changes, of course, is make sure that the, the process you have in place does have, a, have an audit trail. Uh, so you can see again, who, 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 who was able to uh, manage that process and give those hours so that if there ever is a question somewhere down the road, as we do, you know, get back to a new normal, um, someone can say, okay, well, oh, well, that, that was authorized by this person or by someone else. So I always say make sure that, you know, as we look at this, that we have some sort of audit trail. And I didn't mention that much about the timesheet signs, but again, that is something there that um, audit trails are, are very critical out here because we are seeing adjustments and changes. And I know many of your organizations obviously need to have that in place already, but make sure that you have a process to go in and, and audit to see where that change originated uh, for, for these processes. Great, thank you. Um, on that topic still, uh, I know one of our members uh, mentioned that they were concerned about not having as much leave donated um, because everything is so uncertain. Um, have you seen people or, or your clients who already have leave donation policies in place um, either not seeing as much donation happening or about the same or higher? Yeah, we're definitely seeing more. Uh, I mean, it's interesting. I think it's, um, you know, and I, again, you can, you can relate this to a number of items out there, but I, I do feel like the last six weeks, and again, I can speak personally from data basics, but also seeing questions that are coming in from our customers out there is um, we are seeing more organizations kind of come together to, to, to help those individual employees out there. So even if you're not seeing donations from other Employees, uh, what we have seen is organizations creating their own new leaf. You know, so they may come out and call it a, you know, just for sake of argument, you know, it's called a COVID-19 leave code out there. So they're basically creating these own, their own leave code, setting them up so it, it doesn't impact anything else that was already kind of predetermined within the organization and then putting those out there to those, uh, to those individual employees out there. So, um, but, but there's, I will say we're actually seeing, we are seeing a large number of, of kind of donation of, of, of leave out there. Um, but then the other area that I, we have also seen is, is a creation of a new, you know, again, I call it COVID-19. I'm sure someone come up with a more creative leave code than that, but, but that's basically what we're seeing as being used as. Great. And um, just as a reminder, if you do have questions, you can pop them in the questions or chat box um, and we'll be happy to get those answered. Um, another question you had mentioned, um, you know, the concern that once everyone is able to move around a little bit more, that all of a sudden everyone may be requesting leave. Um, so are you seeing more organizations implementing stricter or different leave request policies to manage either that now or with the kind of future view of what may happen once things are more open? Uh, definitely. Uh, um, so it's, it's interesting. Um, we've seen that a lot. Um, and so a couple of any, it also depends on the resource and, and where they sit within the organization out there. Um, you know, and it really comes down to a couple of different areas. The, the biggest one that is probably at, at risk right now, and when I say at risk, I should say it's a, you know, a, you know to the organization is a user or user policies out there. Uh, you know, especially as employees continue to work from home, uh, if you've got a, a policy in place where uh, everyone has to use their leave by the end of the year, um, obviously you have a, you know, in, in years past, what you normally saw is employees would disappear, you know, the end of December. They, they may start, you know, December 18th, 19th, 20th, you know, taking advantage of that week between, you know, the Christmas and New Year holiday and those areas out there because they'd have to use everything by December 31st. Um, nowadays, that that number is really starting to expand out there. So we have seen a number of organizations 
loosen uh, the rules around use it or lose it. Um, so they may push those into next year. Um, the other areas out there is that we are seeing companies go in and implement with a leave request tool the restrictions on number of people that can be gone for a certain over a certain period of time. Now, again, it depends upon the uh, type of resource that you have out there. You know, if you've got someone in the finance group, you can't lose your entire finance team for the same week in July and things like that. Um, but maybe for another group, it's not a big deal if you've got everyone out the same week. And so we see companies implementing leave policies that relate to other workers out there, just making sure that they have coverage for key items out there. Um, and then the other one, uh, which I mentioned, is we are seeing companies go out and actually have people start taking leave right now. Uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, again, as speaking from a management perspective within data basics, uh, I got my first leave request uh, from, from one of my employees uh, just the other day, the person's trying to take their birthday off uh, next week. Um, but again, in, in years past, if we were in the office, you know, people would be asking for that all the time. And again, so people are you know, certainly taking advantage of that, that people aren't, you know, that, that they don't really need to be taking leave to, to take a few hours off to go to the, uh, you know, to go to our doctors if we were doing that and those sort of items out there. So um, the one I mentioned is that some companies are forcing employees to start taking some that leave now uh, as it relates to the, uh, so that again, we, they don't see a large influx coming up uh, once people get back to work. Great, thank you. And um, how do you see the organization supporting remote entry of expenses? So if they didn't have an online platform already, are you seeing a lot of transformations around that? Definitely. Um, so, you know, the, it's interesting for, for a business like ours uh, that's focused on, you know, automating time and expense reporting. Uh, you know, we've seen, uh, in the first week or two, uh, as, as people made the transition home, we had a tremendous number of support tickets out there as companies were asking for how to modify and change and adapt their existing process to what's taking place. Um, as someone that manages a sales organization, uh, the last four weeks have been quite busy for us as organizations are looking to implement uh, plans to support the current process, but also moving in the future. And so, uh, you know, for, for right, like remote employee expenses, uh, the ability for someone to, to be able to get all that data digitized, you know, taking pictures of receipts and submitting electronically so that someone does not need to be in the office to, to you know, physically get those receipts and uh, look at those spreadsheets and rekey that data into the accounting system out there. Uh, uh, an automated expense tool gives an organization the ability to basically touchlessly, um, on, you know, move uh, the expense and the supporting documentation uh, through the accounting process without anyone having to touch it. So it's a, uh, it's a quick, easy way to automate, and it's ultimately a win there for the users out there. Uh, but the other piece of expense automation, which I did mention in there, was as it relates to some of the new policies we're seeing. Uh, so for organizations that are implementing like a flat per diem, where they may say, we're going to give you $200 a month to cover your Wi-Fi, you know, maybe your cell bill or whatever else you need to have. Uh, an automated expense tool will also allow a, an ability for the user to come in there and just basically select per diem and it'll auto populate that data. So you don't need to do any sort of modifications to an existing spreadsheet or obviously a paper form. Uh, it allows a very quick transition to push that output to the users and send notification and the user sees that. Great. So I think that is the last of the questions um, kind of on the topic. And so just one quick one about data basics. Um, so if somebody wanted to transition to using your tools and, you know, they're trying to react quickly to everything going on um, in the world, how would they get their policy set up and about how long does it take um, using data basics? Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, you know, typical that probably the, I would say typical the similar process you set up with any other piece of software out there. Um, and it depends upon the complexity, but we would typically look at about four to eight weeks to set a customer up from beginning to end. Again, it depends upon your individual complexities and, you know, certainly looking at the humentum uh, membership organizations out there, the ones we've worked with, uh, you know, you look at a group within the U.S. and then you start looking at uh, some of the other uh, groups within, you know, within that, you know, globally. Um, but really,
really the process would be to, to sit down, uh, have some from our services team uh, go through a business analysis step, understand exactly the rules you're looking to implement, provide you some impact and certainly some support from a best practices perspective. Uh, and then it's a matter of basically configuring the solution, testing it, and, and rolling it out. Uh, you know, but we typically look at, like I said, about four to eight weeks uh, would be a, a typical process. Uh, we can do it faster. Uh, we have been doing it faster. Certainly some organizations are, uh, you know, looking for a very quick turnaround right now, but it's, it's certainly something we're happy to discuss with companies. Uh, and again, you, you've got my contact information there. And, and if someone has any questions, we're, we're happy to, to provide some additional detail. Great. Thank you. So I think that's all of our questions. If there's anything else you'd like to add in, um, just kind of based on what else I um, have brought up, please feel welcome to do that. Um, as Chris said, just kind of as a wrap up, Chris, is uh, contact information is here, the recording as well as the slides and an information sheet on Data Basics will also be included in the follow-up email. Um, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Um, and you know, yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to add on, please, please do so. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, there's nothing else for me, but thank you everyone for the time today, and thanks, Jessica, for the, uh, the time. We so appreciate it. Thank you.